Sure. Look at Angela. She already ready to make Let's a, protect the a big deal out of it. Oh, Lord. At the expense of the general feeling of safety in the workplace. Girl, don't nobody want to do nothing to you? You date the white. Please, shut up. <sighs> like a bottle of Pepto Bismol. Lord, pinks don't even match whatever that's past the point. Let me get come on, let me get comfortable. Wait. Hello, welcome or nope. Gotta find it. Gotta find it. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh it's an ordinary black girl with you. You can call me Destiny. Cause that's what my mama named me. Anyways, today I am back for another episode of The Office. This will be season three, episode nine for your girl. But first y'all know I like to refresh my memory. Well, I had to say refresh like that. But first, y'all know I like to refresh my memory about what happened last time. Last episode was called The Merger, right? Am I right? You know, the episode before The Merger, the branch was supposed to close. Scranton was supposed to close, but Josh quit and it like messed things up. So Stanford closed instead and they moved some people from Stanford to Scranton. And I had, I got to see how those people were going to work together. I think Karen, Josh, another white lady, a black dude and the Peter Griffin dude looking dude, they moved to Stamp. No, no, no. They moved to Scranton and they got them a taste of Michael, girl. They got them a taste of Michael. I was wondering how it was going to work. Like, the people who are already at the office, the Pams, the the um, the Stanleys, the Merediths, the Phyllises, they already know how Michael is. So, his antics are not surprising to them at all with these new people. Man, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't wish that on nobody experiencing Michael for the first time. Because I just, it's, it's got to be a shock. It's got to be a shocker. It's got to be like, wow, what did I get myself into? So yeah, I remember I remember saying that I wanted Dwight and Andy to be best friends. But I think I said they could either be best friends or they could be like enemies. Because they both like to be whoever in charge, secondhand men. Well, that's what I got. They are enemies now i guess they're like mortal enemies now because they both want to be michael's best man in charge i guess you know they want to be michael's best friend his go-to guy or whatever but like jen said jim's second in charge so now i guess andy and dwight are we fighting over third in charge what um uh, i just remember them trying to put the the Peter Griffin dude on the table, him and the white, trying to pick the Peter Griffin dude up on the table. And the Peter Griffin dude, the Peter Griffin dude, he's a big boy. He's, he's a big boy. That's just what it is, you know. He's, a, he's, he's more on the heavier side, you know. And they were trying to pick this man up and put him on the table in front of everybody. So, those people who came from Stanford, they, they don't know where, what they're getting themselves into. And at the end of the episode, Michael gave them a cup. At the end of the episode, Michael gave them a common enemy. He, like, made them all mad at him. He, he like, let the air out of their tires. And he gave them a common enemy. Like he said, you know. Michael be mean and well, I guess. He he do stuff, but he always mean well, I guess. I guess. But, yeah, that was about what happened that last time. Moving on. The next episode is called The Convict. Um, I know Convict is a criminal. Y'all know I like to do a little guessing, so, um, I don't know. I don't know what this episode could be about, actually. I mean, the convict. I would like to wild guess and say that maybe, like, some people gonna come clean the office. But you know how they have, like, people in jail cleaning spaces? Maybe some people are gonna come clean up and... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know at all. I mean, I don't know. You you can never really guess. I'm trying to I'm trying to give the title something like maybe a convict is gonna be in the office of, for some reason. I'm trying to think of why a person a convict would be in the office, but I don't know. I guess I could just shut up here and get into it. So we about to get into this episode. Cute. Thank you. Oh, may I? Uh, sure. I'm one of those babies from Look Who's Talking. What am I thinking? <laughs> Thirsty, Mama! I want some milk! And you know where milk comes from? Rasks. <sighs> I wonder if they ever gonna change the theme. Not change the song, but like add the new people. Or is it gonna always be this? Hey. Okay, they hey. literally are all mixed up together now. This is crazy. It's fun. 
And Pam just got to sit there thinking. Can't you see that I'm the one who understands you? Been there all alone, so why can't you see? But she could have had him, though. That's my whole point. Like, Pam, that's your man, us, for real. Or... That's your man, Pam. Do what you got to do to get him. Jan, this is Angela Martin from Accounting. Martin. Look, we have a rebate from the Federal Work Opportunity Program, and no one knows what that means. So we get that money for hiring an ex-convict. I didn't hire an ex-convict. Unless they mean Toby, convicted rapist. Uh, <laughs> Why would he joke like that? That's not funny. Why am I laughing? Why? Which one of the new employees is a criminal? Oh. A reformed convict. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So hang on. Let me email our HR. Stay on the line. So one of the new people is a convict. Who is he? They think Andy? Mm. I mean, I could Martin? I could believe it. <sighs> you are such a racist. Wait, why am I a racist? Because you think he's black. He is black. Stop he it. Was the right one stop stop it right now. Yeah, don't. Okay, Michael, it's someone please. named Martin Nash. Yeah. Michael? Why did the convict have to be a black guy? Oh. It is such a stereotype. Oh, here we go. Here, here we go. Here we go. I wonder what he did mm, in our here we go. society. A black man. It's probably like, he probably a ex convict for like a DUI or something or some parking tickets. I, I doubt it is anything. I doubt it. What we need to do is to forget mm. about this whole Martin in prison thing. People will draw unfair conclusions about Martin and or black people. I don't know, Michael. I know you and I just, uh, oh Lord. Sure. Look at Angela. She already ready to make Let's a, protect the a big deal out of it. Oh, Lord. At the expense of the general feeling of safety in the workplace. Girl, don't nobody want to do nothing to you? You date Dwight. Please, shut up. You ain't scared sleeping with Sad Dwight at night? Because I had to be. You worry about that. Jim Halpert. I'm mm, so horny. about that Indian chick, Kelly. She seems pretty slutty, good for a romp in the sack. Oh my god. This is weird. This mix of people. I'm st I gotta get used to this. How about... Bonds are more fun, come on. Trust me on that. Yeah, trust me. That would be fun for no one. And it please. Pam, the receptionist. Mm. Pam. Should I go for it? Jim, you you dang Karen, so let him go for it. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish Andy on Pam. Please say no. Absolutely you should get butt. Why would he even play like that? Martin from Stanford oh my God. was at one time in prison. Mm. How you gonna take it? The white. No. I am greatly concerned what about having a convict in the office. <sighs> it had to be the only other Negro in the office, huh? Look, Karen's kind of like, whatever. This man. Oh, God. <sighs> I know Pam pretty well. I know the things that she likes, and just as important, I know the things that she, that she hates. Mm. And the things that she hates... Frisbee-based competitions. Are you kidding? She, I started the main Frisbee golf club at Cornell, where I went to college. Okay. okay, Andy, you went to Cornell. You keep telling me that. Why? She also loves those ads for Six Flags with the old guy. <laughs> I realize that a lot of you have already heard that Martin here... Nobody heard it. With the law. Nobody heard that. But the people who was in the... I trust him completely. And that anybody who doesn't, ignorant, dumb person. That's you though, Michael. That's you. You show me a white man you trust and I will show you a black man that I trust even more. Pam, tell me a white person you trust. <laughs> hey, I got one. Yeah. No. Jesus. Apollo Creed. And that's a fictional character. Picture a convict. Okay. What's he wearing? I'm, I'm picturing it. Nothing special. Baseball cap on backward, 
baggy pants. Okay. Now slowly open your eyes again. Mm-hmm. Who are you picturing? You. A black man? No, I'm picturing you, Michael. Wrong. That was a white woman. So, you all want to know what I was in for? No. <sighs> yes, they do. I want to know. I actually want to know. Tell us, Mari. I was working in finance, and I got involved in some insider trading. So, I oh. spent a little time in the clink. Oh. I had Martin explain to me three times what he got arrested for, because... You got outdoors time? Two hours every day. Mm. Sometimes we play pickup football games. Michael, why don't we get outdoors time? Because you have a job. And you're not supposed to be doing that. Supposed to just do that nine to five and go home. Outside time at home. And they had uh, classes. I took some watercolor classes. They have art classes? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Prison sound a whole lot better than them, huh? So yeah. A lot of them have gone on to do extraordinary hmm. things in business. I would so rather be in prison. Yeah. Prison sounds great. No, you would not. <laughs> this place is not prison. This pl it's way better than prison. Baby! Aww. Baby. Here, you want to play with it? You can't give paper clips to a baby. You could swallow them. Oh, it's okay. I got tons of them. You like that? Oh, she's so pretty. Got a little distracted by Karen. Listen, you're cute. Mm. There's no getting around it. Mm. So, I don't know if you like country music, but I was thinking maybe one of these days we could drive out to a field, crank up some tunes. Utwe ude uye inkte, ampe. Wow. I... Why would Jim even play like this? This is not funny. Ugh. Who wants Andy all on him like that? Uh-uh. You know, Andy, he ain't ugly. He just, he's weird. He's strange. He's strange. You should prank him back by telling Karen that he confessed his feelings for you. I am instituting some changes to make this more like prison. We are going to start with an hour of outdoor time. So let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> Poor them. And they let it go, baby with her, don't she? Why would she have, what? Oh, hey, my aunt. <laughs> You have TV in the joint? Yeah, in the rec room. Ah, the 10 inch black and white. Actually, our TV was bigger than that one. These people don't realize how lucky they are. This office is the American dream. And they would rather be in the hole. I thought of one last tack you can take with Pam. Yeah? Well, one quick question, do you play the guitar? I play the banjo. Hold on, let me think about that. Yes, that'll work. But can you sing in a sexy high falsetto voice? You know I can move my hair. Yep, that's perfect. Hey. I gotta get my banjo out of my car. Perfect. What is going on? Corporate maligning, slurring, much of it coming from one of you who claims that prison is better than here. He didn't claim it. He just named some stuff and it so happened to be better. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Somebody else who has been to prison who can tell you what it is really like. I'm Prison Mike! You know why they call me Prison Mike? Do you really expect us to believe you're somebody else? Do you really expect me to not push you up against the wall, biatch? Oh, wow. yes. All right. <laughs> I am in his gay stride! In prison, you are somebody's bitch. You, my friend, would be the belle of the ball. Don't drop the soap. Don't drop the soap. <laughs> and prison, it's 50-50. Both. Why is he talking like that? What'd you do, Prison Mike? Yes. I stole. And I robbed. And I kidnapped the president's son. That is quite the rap sheet, Prison Mike. And I never got caught, neither. Then how you, yeah, yeah. Prison Mike, what was the food like in prison? Nothing but gruel. Plus, you can eat your own hair. Why wow. is he talking like that? Prison sounds horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Andy. Andy. You guys got it soft and cushy. This place is freaking awesome. The people are awesome. Your boss is nice. Everybody seems to get along. 
people are tolerant. Nobody's, nobody's bitch. I hope that this scared you. And from me, Prison Mike, to you, I just want to thank you for listening to me. You got a good life. A good life. That must have been hard for you to relive that, both of you. Yeah, that, but it didn't remind me of my time in prison. You guys think prison is so great? All right, well, here you go. Okay, Michael, come on, let it go. No, if you think prison is so wonderful, then enjoy prison. I am going to leave them in <laughs> there man, until is. they can appreciate what it's like to have freedom. And if this doesn't bother them, then I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Toby's not even a part of everything, huh? I didn't even notice he wasn't there. Why is everyone locked in the conference room? They were very disrespectful to me and to the office. And Martin has had a bad influence. To think that I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Huh? There go that racism. They're gonna have to let him out for their high will. No, they're teasing you. I mean... Obviously, this is a much nicer place than an actual prison. We get paid to be here. We go home afterwards and have social lives. And... He shouldn't have to explain this to you, Michael. Jesus. Long day. Was, no. Really long. Why don't you guys head home early? Time off for good behavior. <laughs> Martin went from being a new guy from Stanford to the convict friend back to a convict then to kind of a nuisance actually did he fire him and finally to a quitter oh he quit and i will not miss him oh that's actually sad he just looked that's the second one he didn't lost i think the only people who actually gonna really stick around to be a part of the cast for real is andy and karen well, if she actually end up like Andy for real, then that's really be in GM's face. But I just I don't see how she could tolerate it though. I don't know, Andy just. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just finished what 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 season three episode nine of The Office. Um, my guess was totally wrong. I I would have never guessed that though. I would have never guessed that. So apparently. Josh used to get a check for hiring somebody who used to be an ex-convict. So, that means one of the people that came from Stanford was a convict. So, of course, they trying to figure it out. They trying to figure it out. Turns out it's Martin. Like I said, oh, why I had to be Martin, child? Why I had to be Martin? Like, the only other black person in the office, you got Stanley. You got Martin. And Karen, I think Karen had black. Quincy Jones, I dad, is what she had black. And that's about it. Other than that, you know, that's it. So, but I guess that was just a part of the episode because Michael want to go around acting like he holier than thou talking about anybody who has anything to say that just racist and ignorant and blah, blah, blah. But he the main one. <sighs> I just, I don't know what to do with Michael. I, I just, how am I not, how am I still getting surprised by anything that that, that man does? I just... I don't know. Like I said, I know I would I would have never guessed that. I would've I would I would have never guessed convict Mike. I would've I would I would have never guessed that. I'm sorry, I just had to sit there and shake my head a little longer, child. I just I just <laughs> uh, These episodes are getting crazier and crazier. Cause what was that? I just but it ended up with the man Quinn. But I get it. I get it. Who who want who in their right mind wants to be in that environment if they don't have to? So I would quit too. I, but it's like a, another one bites the dust. That's two Stanford people who didn't quit. Well, Peter Griffin got quit, but Michael was like, "No, you're fired." So now they got to pay him for leaving. But oh, getting fired, I guess. Uh. And that's Martin's gone. Now we just got the pregnant the lady with the baby who was breastfeeding. And then Karen. I wonder if she gonna ever end up leaving. Like, is she permanent? Because then it's just regular people who was already there. And Jim came back. So, 
Is she permanent? Is she gonna leave? I feel, I feel like the only really permanent people we got are Karen and Andy. That episode, <laughs> it was crazy. They just, but anyway, child, I just, I ain't got no more, I ain't got nothing else to talk about. Uh, Jim with Karen, Pam looking at him like, that should be me holding your hand. That should be me making you laugh. That's how she was looking. But that could have been her. Like, I don't I don't get it. It, it definitely could have been you, Pam. Why are you looking like you're longing for him now when you could have had him? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. She looking jealous. What? Why? What, what are you jealous of? You could have had that man. I don't get I don't understand it. I don't get it. Obviously, you don't want him. So... Get, keep those little eyes off them and let Karen have my man. But I still got faith. I still got faith in this Jim and Pam love story. And somehow it's going to come back around. Don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know how. Oh, we saw where. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to come back around. It's going to come back around. I just got to wait. But anyways, if you made it this far, you ain't got to be here. What? Wait. Wait, I don't think is that what I say? If you made it this far, thanks for wait. If you made it this far, thanks for being here. You ain't gotta be here, but you are. That's amazing. You are amazing. I would definitely be seeing y'all in the next episode of, of The Office. Bye.